Vertical fist. Ridge hand. Heel of palm. Reverse punch. Okay. Personally, in real fighting, I don't believe too much in kicking. You want to keep your feet on the ground. You're just too vulnerable when you raise a foot off the ground in a real fight. However, some in-shin karate people, might want to hold this way, educated me to this shot and demonstrated to me that it could be used safely and effectively. Notice this blow is not much above the waist. Target is here. Area is the shin. When you get this, is when the guy th opens up, opens up that left uh, flank here, and bam, blow to the floating ribs. Now I want to show you <clears throat> how Michael can achieve remarkable power by relaxation and shifting his body weight. Notice that his hand is actually touching. Uh, don't do it, but demonstrate the moves. Notice he drops and twists. This shifts his body weight into the blow. But observe that he's actually touching. Whatever velocity he must, he's going to get, or acceleration, has to be achieved in this space. Go for it. Do the edge. Yes. Boom! It's <sighs> a good one. One more time. Full force. A little more force than I <laughs> anticipate. Very strong blow. Very strong blow. So remember, the blows, vertical fist, ridge hand, heel of palm. We're going to look at some others. We're going to demonstrate the amount of force that's necessary to particular targets, in particular floating ribs, clavicle, and blows that can kill. Michael, <clears throat> this stack of boards is about equal to most people's floating ribs. Now larger people, their bones are bigger, they're harder to break. Notice two things, physics and materials here. Going to use the heel of palm strike we saw earlier <clears throat> on the heavy bag. Notice that Mr. Stein's backing him up because otherwise if the boards were displaced they might not break because some of that energy would be absorbed and they're moving back. Likewise, when you're punching vertical fist, heel of palm, a quick snappy strike, spam, spam, with hips rotation and coming back as fast as it goes out, doesn't give the whole body time enough to move back and absorb part of the energy before bones break, the actual area of contact. Snappy blow will do that, break the bones. Or alternatively, you can throw your man up against a wall so his body physically can't move back. Then you're much more likely to break bones on him. Okay. Hey! Floating ribs are an attractive target simply because there's a lot of body. It's an easy target to get, particularly in a grappling situation. But busting floating ribs, surprising as it may seem, is not necessarily immediately incapacitating unless one of the ribs splinters and goes and perforates a lung. Here is a blow that requires less force, and if it breaks the clavicle, you'll see why later, absolutely puts your man out of the picture and ends the contest. A clavicle is fairly easily broken, and I speak from experience here. Generally, it's easier to break somebody's clavicle than is these these, this thickness of boards. Choice of weapons will be the suto. Hey! I can tell you that a clavicle breaks a lot easier than that. If you succeed in breaking the clavicle, you put him out of the picture. The candle drills train you to relax properly when delivering the blow. This allows your striking hand to develop the velocity which we have seen is so critical to achieving a powerful blow. Without proper muscular relaxation, 
you cannot extinguish the candle. These drills also train you to focus a blow to a specific spot such that the energy transfer occurs on that vital point. Note how many of these strikes move like a bullwhip, snapping back as fast as they go out. This makes the energy transfer a one-way street. This means that almost all the energy of the collision between the striking hand and the area struck on the opponent is absorbed by the opponent, not the striking hand. When done properly, this is why a closed hand blow, like the back fist or vertical fist, can sometimes be struck to the opponent's head, such that the danger of busting one's own hands is greatly reduced. Study these blows and recognize the crisp transitions from relaxation, lockout at impact, and the accompanying energy transfer, which extinguishes the candle, and then the instant relaxation again to retrieve the striking hand. Training on these candle drills, combined with work on the heavy bag, will place powerful blows into your personal arsenal. Here we're looking at the attacks to the head and neck. The head and neck are some of the most effective attacks because they're primarily neurological rather than structural attacks, although not exclusively. These attacks affect the brain. Brain controls all. Carotid artery moves down both sides of the neck. So we attack to either side of the neck. <clears throat> Shuto. Palm up, vertical, perpendicular. Vertical, right angle, perpendicular to the neck. Suto to the other side of the neck. Our palm is down. Remember to keep the hand loose so it can move quickly. Lock it out, perpendicular. Ridge hand. This is one of my personal favorites. Later we'll show you how to create the openings for the blow. No one's going to stand there and let you whack on them in a real fight. Ridge hand. Side. Side. Ridge hand to other side of neck. Here the palm is up. More difficult blow. Still useful. <laughs> Elbow to neck. This one occurs most often when there's some grappling. Remember, we don't change the techniques to display our knowledge of them. As long as you're making good contact, continue. Then if it breaks away, okay, chain to something else. Another personal favorite. Open hand to throat. Notice how the open hand moves along the center of the body, rising from below his line of vision. Heel of palm under ten. Say, say. Here's one I've used very often, actual fights. Vertical fist to nose. Again, along the center line of the body, striking surface here, an acceleration based blow. Back fist to temple. Set. To the temple. Next, we will look at attacks to the body.
In terms of attacks to the body, my personal favorite is the clavicle because the clavicle is fairly easy to break and is a completely disabling injury to your aggressor, your opponent. It's completely disabling, he can't do anything, but it is not a life-threatening injury unless you hit so hard that you cut the subclavicular artery. That isn't real likely, can't happen. Choice of weapons. First is the suto. Bam, bam, bam. Hammer fist or bottom fist. Chai, chai, chai. Or open heel of palm coming down. Advantage here is chai, 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 chai. Bam, bam, bam. The open hand can move quickly. There's no muscular tension because it's open. Bam, impacting surface again. Heel upon. I said this injury is completely disabling. A broken clavicle is completely disabling. Let's talk to someone who can tell you that that is true from personal experience. Michael. Hi. I, I have to agree the broken clavicle is completely disabling. I broke the clavicle on this side of my body, and while it was not a particularly painful injury, I took the opportunity to practice some of my martial arts techniques and I found that not only could I, this is the real one, this is the broken one, not only could I not uh, use this side, I couldn't use the unbroken side really for anything more than lifting a fork to my mouth. Uh, I'd have to agree that, that uh, a broken clavicle means the fight is over. Other attacks to the body, solar plexus. Best one is heel of palm. Once again, open hand moves quickly. Shut, shut. Ideally, you'd like to be moving slightly up under the sternum to compress the heart and diaphragm. Also, the one that I demonstrated on the heavy bag, reverse punches to the floating ribs. Now you can also use the heel of palm to break the floating ribs. Bam, here. Feel them compress. Bam, bam. Elbows to the solar plexus. On a very large man, you may need the more power generated from the elbow. But the elbow sacrifices articulation. It's easier to use the heel of palm if you don't need the full on force of dealing with a behemoth. Remember, slightly rising along the center of the body, rising up. Note that a proper stomp to the attacker's foot slides down the shin first. This is quite painful, as well as assuring that the foot is actually struck. Here we see an attack to the back of the knee after avoiding an attacker's punch. You must appreciate the speed at which this technique would be executed in an actual attack and the power of the kick itself. Note how the attack to the knee sets up the possible knife hand strike to the back of the attacker's neck. looking at attacks to the knees. Attacks to the knees are serious because they result in often permanently disabling injuries. Attacks to the knees uh, should not be used unless there's no reasonable alternative. Knee injuries do not heal well. Generally, they never heal completely. Let's take a look at how the knee works. Okay. The knee is meant to bend like this. Okay. It is not meant 
to move sideways. Therefore, if we strike the knee this way from the inside, we tend to tear tendons on the outside of the knee. We attack the knees with feet strikes, but I want to show the vector of the blow. If we attack from the inside, the outside ligament is pulled. If we attack from the outside, this way, then these ligaments on this side tend to be pulled. Let's see how that might be achieved. Generally, this occurs during a grappling situation. I use my opponent's body to stabilize. And then I strike, yes, shit, stepping back slightly to get balance. Bam, bam. Also, striking to the kneecap, skinning it up. Bam, like any other strike, knee attacks, if they're used, should be changed. Bam, bam, bam. The danger is you're raising your foot off the ground. Therefore, you're using his body to stabilize you as you kick. Here, we're looking at what is probably the most important part of the film. I've already said it's more important to know how to avoid being hit than it is to hit effectively. What we're looking at here are applications how to achieve or create the opening to get the strike to the various targets. To do that, you first, generally, must avoid an incoming strike of some sort. Here I'm going to look at two of the most common 